is now that we have the missiles showing up at the bottom of the screen, we're actually going to get them to move up the screen and fly at the alien or off the top of the screen. We're also going to add a missile sound so that when the missile fires, you can hear it go. So this was our project from last time. If we run it, it's going to step through our scenes like we've created before. And we have our start button and we can move the spaceship back and forth and we can fire our missiles, but they just stay at the bottom of the screen. So to start with, we're going to add in the sound so that when you fire the missile, you can actually get some feedback. So to do that, what we're going to do is we need to load a new asset and we've loaded our images in preload before and we're going to load the exact same kind of object but it's going to be sound files. So the exact same way that you load an image, we're going to do the same process but load a sound file. And let me spell sound correctly. <laughs> Just trying to auto complete. There we go. So in our assets, we actually have this sound file called laser1.wave, which should be right here. And if you open that up in a new tab, you can play the sound. And that's the sound that we're going to have when we actually fire the lasers. So now that we have the asset loaded in preload right here, what we can do is when we actually fire our laser, we can make the sound happen. So we're going to scroll down to where we decided if we're pressing the space bar that we set our variable true so that we don't get a complete stream of missiles and we construct our new missile and we add it to the group. So after we add it to the group, in here, we should add our sound so that it actually makes the laser sound. So once again, we do this because we're in our class and there is a method called sound and it has one called play. And we then just use the key that we used for this asset, which was laser. So if you go back up to preload, you'll notice that here we called it laser. So now every time we hit the space bar, a missile should show up and our laser sound should happen. So when we start, we can move and you hear the sound and the laser shows up. So that's our first step. The next thing that we would like to do is we would like to make the missiles actually move up the screen. And since they're going to be slowly or quickly move up the screen, we should probably use update because remember this is being called 60 times a second, hopefully. So we're checking for our various keyboard inputs, including making the laser show up. So after we do all of this and we've reset our um, fire laser boolean variable, what we could do is in here, we could rotate through this missile group that we have because it's holding all the missiles. And for each item in there, we can move them up. So this is going to be a slightly new command. So we have this dot missile group and what we can do is we can pick off each child element so there is actually a special keyword called children and it's each of them and what we do is for each one of these we are now going to run a function so for each one of these, we're going to do something and it's going to be a function call. And notice that I'm sticking the function right in this group. So for each of the children in this missile group, 
this function is going to happen. Okay? And the function has a parameter that we can pass into it, and the built-in parameter is item. So it's going to pick out each one of the missiles at a time, and each one of those missile items is going to be held in this variable called item. So since we're in a function, we can use brackets, and then we can actually reference, just going to set my spaces to, oops, I forgot to move them back. There we go. So for each one of these items, we can do something. So what are we going to do? Well, it's a missile. It's Each one of them is held in this variable called item, but they still have a Y value and that Y value is where it, each one of these happens to be placed on the screen. So 30 times a second, I'm just going to take the item's Y value, each one of the missiles, and I'm going to subtract, because remember, the location of the origin is at the top, so the Y values increase as you go down, so I'm going to just subtract a little bit from each of them, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this bracket up and put it in line here. Okay, so this is slightly different from what we've seen before. Usually our functions are separate, but because it's this function exists only for each one of these items, and we need to grab the item, this is a way that you can do this too. So now that when we run this, and you press start, we can fire our missile, and notice, there it goes. It goes up the screen. And because it's going through for each one of the items, it's like a loop, it loops through. So this is really good, but there's still a problem. You'll notice that they just go right off the screen, which is what we want, but they still exist. And as I'm firing more and more missiles, it's going to be taking up more and more memory in our computer, and eventually we're gonna run out of memory. So clearly when the missiles go off the screen, we should get rid of them. And there is a way of doing that. There's a method called destroy. So we could have an if statement and check to see if the item, one of the missiles, its Y location is less than zero. Because if it's less, less than zero, that means it's over here in negative space. It has clearly gone off the screen. And if it has gone off the screen, it has a Y value that's less than zero, then we can just take the item and do this method called destroy. And that's provided to us by phase of three. So now when we rerun, our program and we fire the missiles, any missile that is in the missile group that happens to have a Y value less than zero, meaning that it has gone off the top of the screen, it will then be removed from memory and we won't be wasting memory because clearly once it goes off the screen, we don't need it for anything else. And now we're in good position. Now what we need to do is actually start generating some random aliens to start showing up on our screen as well.